Kelly Beichel and I were here and we were talking about what if we just got rid of the rules for meditating? What if we do that? What would that be like? So Kelly, tell me your opinion on this. <laughs> I think there's too many rules around right. meditating that around my, mindfulness. And I think um, it holds people back from doing it. Like what, what are some rules that you see people doing? So, um, you know, that you have to sit in a chair and sit up at a certain angle and then put your head, your chin to your chest or something and put your feet flat on the floor. And, you know, and what if you're in a place that that can't happen, right? Yeah, you're right. In a you could do it standing up on the subway. <laughs> Uh, I once heard from, uh, I went through a coaching training and one of our teachers in that training, she said she meditates after she wakes up and whether it's her alarm or however, she actually purposefully lies in bed and meditates in bed for 10 minutes. So her meditation is early in the morning. She does it with an app with some sound, but I just thought, oh my gosh, that's, that's mind blowing. That's actually super comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I thought I heard somebody say that, like, is it okay if I, and the fact that somebody's ask having to ask you know there's too many rules. Somebody's saying, is it okay if I lay in my bed to meditate? I mean, because <laughs> as if somebody's written rules that it has to happen this way. Mm. But right. Or what you and I were just talking about in the previous program. Can you meditate while you're washing the dishes? Can you meditate while you're vacuuming? Can you meditate while you're just sitting on the floor while your kids are around you? Can you sort of breathe in and out? Can you enjoy the moment? Can you be aware? Absolutely. Right. And and when we were talking about this before, I was mentioning that I do that too to get me back into the practice of it. And I noticed that I get up and and I would go get coffee and then think, oh, I can't meditate yet because I got this hot cup of coffee. And if it's hot, then it's gonna get cold and all these things, right? <laughs> and then oh, I'll wait until I get the office and then I'll meditate. But then something is coming up urgently. And so then I in the next thing I know I haven't meditated and I haven't gotten my head in a good space. So then I said, well, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to go against the rules and meditate before I get up out of bed in the morning. And I feel more energized to get up in the morning by doing the meditation before I get up. And, and so I realized we don't need all those rules. <laughs> what would, going into meditation without rules, what would that look like? What would some just sort of popcorn examples of that look like? To meditate without the rules, um, you could be anywhere. You could be on an elevator going up to your office knowing you have a busy day and that you might, the elevator doors might open and people need you and you could just go up and as you're feeling it go up, just tune in to your breath in and out, in and out and release kind of relieve that nervous system before you get hit with a barrage of things to do. Um, on the way home, you could be in your car and taking breaths in and out, in and out, in and out. And, to, and that's your way of doing that buffer, the transition from work to home. And so that you know, maybe you're, you know, you kind of letting that go with the out breath and bringing home on the in breath, you know, and just kind of that that's kind of gets you ready for home life. So is there anything though that we do need to do in order to actually call it meditation as opposed to call it having a restful moment? Mm. I think letting thoughts that, letting thoughts about the future or the past or even the present to let them go. So um, it's really about not having the extraneous thoughts and just kind of being right there in that moment with your breath. And you, you will get those thoughts, like you saying you were saying oh, yeah. you will get them, but just noticing them and letting them go. You're not dead if you don't have thoughts. <laughs> well, if we if we do this, we could be meditating six hours a day just between everything that we're doing. I mean, is that is that practical? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you could anytime you know, and it's like if you can pair it with a different practice you're doing, like riding the elevator now you know i'm thinking about things places i could do it right you know i live on the 25th floor of a high rise i could do it when i get on the elevator right and just kind of on the way up right and so it's something i'm already doing and pairing it with it or you know after i brush my teeth i do it you know so that if you pair it with something else it's kind of like that tiny habits then you're more likely to do it or you pair it with drinking a glass of water 
or you pair it with looking out the window of your office. I, I've known people who, when they're driving, every time they come to a light, that light is a trigger, is a reminder in their head to take an extra deep breath and just to yeah. feel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But every time we can become in, t- or we, we tune in to our bodies in the present moment is um, is like heaven for our brain. <laughs> and, you know, and it's heaven for our bodies because it slows us down. This has been a very short episode of what if we got rid of the rules for meditating. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. Thanks. <laughs>